I became a SOM accidentally. I went to school for psychology with a focus in child psychology. I think it all came together pretty untraditionally. I've walked a pretty crooked path to get where I am, but I've always known I've loved food. I love wine. I grew up with it. It's a passion. It's in my family. There's not a meal that doesn't involve wine. I started really liking wine actually before I got into the kitchens, where I was learning about food and I learned about wine at the same time. I was in the Marine Corps. I did crab fishing for a season. Um, I worked construction. I have a degree in chemistry. If I don't have a restaurant background, I actually have a really bad background for one pork and two uh, for alcohol. Uh, I was born and raised in Saudi Arabia, uh, where both things are completely illegal. A kitchen server and a server, you know, an assistant psalm, you're a cellar master, then you become a psalm then assistant wine director and today wine spirits director. I grew up in the woods in Arkansas on a farm. I had a very experiential upbringing. My mom's family is Italian and there was always kind of wine around. Food was a really important part. We always ate together at the dinner table. I was studying philosophy and political science and actually working on my master's thesis proposal and started studying wine and making money and really enjoyed wine and figured that I could uh, I could still have philosophy and political science as part of my, my MO, but I could do it over a glass of wine and instead of, you know, trying to teach in a classroom, I was teaching from behind a bar. I have the wonderful pleasure of doing Koshan at every city and every event in education, was what it's always been about. And everything in the room you guys will see, there's some layer of education. And this, Psalm Smackdown, brings a whole new conversation to the table. I'm a bit of what's called a size queen uh, in the uh, wine industry, so like, go big or go home, one of those things. I looked into my cellar and uh, I went to Napa Valley um, and found a uh, bottle of uh, Baccio de Vino's Pazzo. You've got balanced fruit, earthiness, great acidity, and should be a fun wine to play with the food. It's basically a Tuscan blend. Sangiovese, a little bit of a cab, a little Merlot. So it's a new world style uh, take on an old world wine. It's a family of the Jansons that started it back in 1993. And so I have uh, a rare, rare large format of that that we'll be pouring. Um, and uh, I'm excited to pop that bottle. Red wines really were, were far more challenging for the sommeliers because so much food um, that is made on the Cochon Tour is very elegant. These are not rustic dishes. These, there's, not, there's no barbecue sauce being poured all over. I've never seen chefs this passionate about any food at any event. And so I'm very lucky to watch and be a part of these sommeliers choosing these really diverse and elegant red wines. Red wines that reach across the aisle and are able to pair with almost anything. So the Algera Maranthau, it's a light aromatic red wine, really good balance of red fruit and some savory elements, oregano, other savory herbs, crushed rock and leather, and a little bit of uh, savory meat as well. I found that it can handle the lighter, more delicate dishes with equal ease as it does some of the richer items. Maranthau, which is the Spanish pronunciation, I, I think if you're you know, saying it Maranthau, you're also correct, but the Spaniards would say Maranthau. Um, it's actually the same as Portuguese Bastardo um, and, very interestingly, the same as French Trousseau. A lot of these classic New World wines, they're almost always named after the grape varietal. Uh, that's very rare that it doesn't happen, whether it's in Australia or California or South America. The wines are named Malbec, Shiraz, or Cabernet Sauvignon. So you really do see the grape varietals uh, as what people recognize. Uh, where in Europe, it's the region that is so important to them. The grapes that are grown there are grown in the best pieces of land, and that's what makes them valuable or great. I brought Vino Loria Frappato 2013 from Sicily, and so it's a, a mid to light bodied red wine, with great cherry notes, wonderful acidity, it's just a bright, fresh wine that, that does wonderful with a little bit of a chill and fantastic for a, a warm climate here like Miami. Rapato, I think, is a very flexible red wine. And, you know, when you're thinking along the lines of like how Cru Beaujolais can be flexible with food or even Pinot Noir, but uh, it's a little less fussy. I mean, it's Italian. I 
think passion's infectious. You see somebody who else has a lot of passion for, for a subject or a program or a project or a bottle of wine and you want to learn about it. And all the way through, it's just people loving one thing, grapes. I remember the first bottle of wine that really moved me was a 1990 bottle of Los Vascos Cabernet from Chile. It was a glass of Chenin Blanc. 1998 Canoe Creek Vineyard Merlot from Chateau St. Michel in Columbia Valley, Washington. And the guy that was describing it to me said, you know, when I smell this, it smells like a, a sleeve of Fig Newtons that you just opened. And I smelled it and I said, whoa. There's something about it that is just, um, you can't put your finger on. Wine is fascinating. It's always changing. You're never going to know everything. I think it ties a lot of things I'm really interested in together. Food, culture, uh, travel, uh, obviously drinking. Uh, it's one of the few things I'm good at. And my mom told me that if there was anybody that was going to make a career out of consuming alcohol, I was, I was going to be the one. Truthfully, let's get right down to it. Um, get out your Kleenex. I'm a sommelier because I love taking care of people. I truly do. And when I was a little girl, um, my grandparents used to take me to, you know, maybe it was a steakhouse on my birthday or somewhere for a graduation. And 20, 30 years later, my grandpa would say, do you remember that waitress that gave you extra cherries in your Roy Rogers? And I'd be like, yes, I do. And it's the people that make the experience and of course, wine enhances that. Thousands of conversations going on in your head every single day, thinking about different wines, where they're going, where they've been, how they're heading there, what's gonna go with it, and then you get one chance. Someone asks you the right question, and it just pours out. One time I accidentally pulled off the, uh, the bride-to-be's mother's wig with a button on my shirt. So that was, that was probably the, the most real moment for me, occupationally. 